Well, good morning. After losing the sleep last night, you look uh, bright-eyed and fishy-tailed or bushy-tailed. And I uh, remember my grandmother using that term. And I said, is that just an old mountain saying or where'd that come from? Well, that surfaced about 1,500 and people use that, which means that you are lively, alert, and eager. And that's what I'm seeing here this morning. I'm just seeing lively, eager people that are ready to come together to worship the Lord thy God in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Look with me into the uh, Word of God, understanding three worlds. <clears throat> I'm going to begin with earth because we're familiar with uh, where we live. Then heaven is another place that we're going to go. And uh, we're going to end up uh, with uh, hell. And I hope that's not where you end up. Um, in Genesis chapter number 1, in verse number 1, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Genesis chapter number 1 is all about creation. Remember a song that came out probably, um, I don't remember just exactly, I was just a young guy when they came out with a song, He's got the whole world in His hands, He's got the whole world in His hands, He's got the Ah, see there, I knew you were lively this morning. Uh, and it goes on to talk about the little bitty baby, that little bitty baby, I think. Uh, talks about you and me, brother and sister, uh, the wind and uh, the rain. And so, this book is God's love letter to His bride. I don't know if any of you uh, uh, people wrote to your mate before you got married, but uh, in the summer when uh, the school was out, uh, my wife would always go, uh, my girlfriend at that time, uh, she would always go to Atlanta to live with her sister down there. And so it uh, cost too much to use the telephone back then. Didn't have a telephone. If you wanted to use the phone, you had to walk a mile or so. Uh, but we wrote letters. And uh, usually about once a week, uh, I would get a letter from her or she would get a letter from me. And so it was exciting to get those letters concerning what's going on in her life. But over 30-something times here in Genesis chapter number 1, we find out that God created. A great power here is being displayed. And the word creation, as you look that word up... It simply means brought into being without the use of pre-existing material. So we know that God uh, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit of God, um, they stepped out of nowhere onto nothing, uh, and then they began to create. And it just simply said, and He spoke, uh, and these things came into being. So it, it requires great power of Notice here, first of all, the earth. And in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 3, it said, Things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now that's power. I mean, can anybody snap their finger here and create anything? Uh, No, I cannot. And so after the original creation, there's a pause in the creation process. And then you note there in verse number 2 where it says that the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Three things that you'll notice here in uh, this passage of Scripture and that is um, it was unformed, it was unfilled, and it was unilluminated. So what does these words mean here this morning? Um, 
unformed does not mean that it had no shape, but rather it had no design. There was substance, but there was not styling. It's kind of like a pile of wood that's piled up or lumber, uh, yet it's not been built into a house yet. Uh, or like a, a lump of clay sitting on a potter's wheel, uh, ready there to be formed. And so what God's going to do for the next six days, uh, we know God is going to form and fill uh, and illuminate the earth. Uh, uh, the lack of form is going to be taken care of in these six days. Uh, then you'll notice there it says it's unfilled. Uh, the earth was void. In other words, um, it was empty of any kind of inhabitants. Uh, and day, day five and day six uh, is going to take care of the filling of the earth. Uh, and then there's unilluminated, in other words, uh, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And so creation began with materials uh, and not illumination. And then we have six days uh, in which God will continue what he started with nothing, and he created the earth as it is today. One, God, one day God said, let there be light, and there was light from the darkness. And it goes on to say, in the evening and the morning was the first day. So we know that time began in the afternoon, not at the midnight hour that we celebrate today. And then on day two, we notice there, uh, God, the, God allowed the firmament. Uh, he said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters uh, and divide the waters from the waters. Uh, so in the beginning, there was only one location of water before the firmament came into being. And when the firmament came into being, then mankind is going to have a place to exist. Uh, on day three there in Genesis 1 and 9, it says, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together under one place uh, and let the dry land appear. And then in verse number 11, it says, uh, let the earth bring forth grass, uh, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding after its fright, uh, after his kind. Uh, and then day four, God made two lights. Uh, he made the sun and the moon, and he put them in the proper place. Uh, and we notice there in verse number 17 of Genesis chapter number one, and he says to give light upon the earth, uh, to divide the light uh, of the day from the light night, uh, and let them be for signs and for seasons uh, and for days uh, and uh, for years. Uh, we could not see the earth. Uh, if light were not into existence. Uh, day five came the filling of the seas uh, with all the different kinds uh, of things that's found in the water. Uh, I'm glad that God made fish. Uh, I'm glad that God made crappy. Uh, I love the fish. Uh, ain't nothing no better than going out and catching a mess of fish uh, and fill filleting them things out and, and introducing them to Fresh grease, uh, boy, are they good. Uh, they'll make your tongue jump out of your mouth and slap your brains. Uh, they're so good. And I love them. I love them fresh fish uh, uh, that you get out of the lake. Uh, he then fills the sky uh, with the creatures that fly. Uh, and on day six, he created uh, the animals and he created man. Uh, he created animals and two things he said about them. Uh, he gave them a design. You'll notice there, it says in verses 24 and 25, uh, it said that, that God, uh, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after its kind, cattle and creeping things, and, and beasts of the earth after its kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and cattle. Uh, and we notice there, uh, 
Uh, he says, everything that creeps up on the earth after his kind, God saw that it was good. So we notice here two things. There was their design. They are to produce after their kind. And then second of all, there is the diet. Uh, it says they were given every herb uh, for meat uh, uh, that's out there in the, in, the, in the world. So in the beginning, the, uh, all the animals were vegetarian. They didn't eat one another. But man come along and he fell. And ever since man fell, then animals uh, have been at one another. Now, once again, in the end time, we know that God's going to take care of that, and He's going to put animals back again, and they're going to be vegetarians again, and we know that the lion and the lamb's going to lie down together, and a child's going to be able to play on the hole of the snake and, and not bother them in that day. Now, it's going to take a new body for me to play with a snake. I'll guarantee you that. I just can't handle them. You, and, and I remember several years ago, a uh, family went down to, uh, I don't remember, Marine Lynn, maybe it was. And they had all kind of snakes and things there. And of course, I think I had one, one daughter then that would handle snakes. I, I really wondered about what she'd grow up to be. <laughs> you know. And then when I, when I found my sister out in Texas, uh, and uh, the, and, and uh, uh, they are they are somewhat Pentecostal or uh, assembly of God, and my daughter texts him and asks him, says, "Do y'all handle snakes out there?" And of course, they text my daughter back and said, "No, we don't handle snakes back uh, out here." And so me and Mary is off out there, and we were down in below the church. Uh, and here come one of the daughter-in-laws uh, with a big old snake wrapped around her neck. Uh, and uh, that thing was that big around. Uh, and she says, here, it won't bother you. I'll take your word for it. I'm not handling snakes. Uh, I handle snakes with a, with a shotgun. That's the best way I know to do it. Uh, and so we know here, God said he created all things. Male and female. Listen, male and female. He created them. And if a person's got a problem with that, they need to get a mirror and look. No problem to figure that out. And yet today, and they said they look forward to the day when a man can have a baby. I'm glad I'm gone by then. Man cannot have a baby. No way. <clears throat> when my wife was having the babies, and she was in pain, and she was hurting, and they asked her, did she want a shot? And I says, I do. <laughs> I'd been glad to take it in that day. So God saw everything that He had made. And, it was, and, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the six days. God's ways of doing things is always good. It's mankind that has corrupted the earth. It's you and I that has caused the problems that we're having today. And the reason you and I are having the problems that we're having today is because we had a mother and a daddy that had the same kind of problems that we had, which they had a mother and daddy, and it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden, and mankind failed in the Garden of Eden. Simply because they wanted some fruit. Then let's look at heaven. What is heaven? Heaven is a place where God lives. With his holy angels and the saints who have died. Hebrews chapter number 12. Verses 22 and 23. But you are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an unnumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which was written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Heaven is a place. Heaven is a place. John chapter number 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
In my Father's house uh, are many mansions, uh, and if it not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. It's not a myth. It's not an illusion. It's not a state of mind. But hell is a real place. Uh, Although we do not know the longitude nor the latitude, we cannot uh, plot it on a map, so to speak. Uh, But heaven does exist. Uh, It's up there somewhere. One day I'm going to go there. I trust that I'll see you there when I get there. Or I trust that you'll come and see me when I get there. Time has flown by. Heaven is a place. Heaven is a person. John 14 and 3. And if I go, Jesus is saying this, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I, Jesus, will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Colossians 1. 15, 16, and 17. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. And he, and he, Jesus, is before all things, and by him all things consist. So heaven is a place where God lives. It's the place where all the holy angels are in. And there's a paradise there in which the saints of God, who were absent from the body, were present with the Lord. In this place. Need this one? I knew they'd give me a dead battery. (laughs) Do I need to start over? (laughs) Where is heaven? Where is heaven? Well, let's see what the Word of God says. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. But I would not have you to be ignorant, uh, brethren. He's talking to the saints of God. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if, for if we believe, now dig ye, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe that? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive, and I'm hoping this happens today, I'm ready to go. I don't have to go back home. I don't have to pack a suitcase. We're trying to pack a suitcase where we can get away for a few days, but I don't have to have that suitcase to go to heaven. No. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, Unto the coming of the Lord shall not hinder or prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend. So heaven is where? If he's going to descend, heaven is up. He's going to descend from heaven. Notice this. With a shout. With a voice of the archangel. With a trump of God. And the dead in Christ, do what? Shall rise first. Now, why do you suppose they have to get up first? You ever thought about that? 
They're six foot down. Ain't that how deep a grave is? Six foot down. So they got to get up in order to meet us as we come up. Just imagine standing out there in the cemetery and the rapture take place. If I wouldn't be it, I would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> when I was just a young boy, six, seven, eight year old, <clears throat> we used to go down to this other place and we would play with some of the neighbors. Well, when I came back home, and I always tried to leave a little early because I had to walk by the cemetery to get back home. Well, on this given evening, and I'd waited too late playing, you know, I waited too late. And when I come across the old Mount Bethel Church of God up on the hill up there, <clears throat> the whole cemetery was lit up. And this was before these bright lights that we have. Well, my heart began to flutter. I didn't know what to do. So I said, if he's going to get me or what it is, he's going to have to catch me running. <laughs> I went across that hill in a split second to find out later, somehow or another, Something happened in the atmosphere, and it was shining bright lights in certain places. Uh, well, it got my attention. Ain't no doubt about that. And so the Lord is coming back. It says three things here. The Lord shouts. How does he shout? With the voice of the archangel. With the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. And the saints on the earth at the rapture of the church goes up to heaven. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse number 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord where? In the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Heaven is up, but how far? Do y'all remember uh, some uh, Russian astronauts? Or I don't think they called them astronauts. But they got in their Spooknik or Sputnik. Wasn't that what they called it? And they went up and they, I think they circled the moon. And they came back. And they said, <clears throat> we've been up there and says, we know now there is no God and there is no heaven. You know why they didn't see God and they didn't go to heaven? That space capsule couldn't go far enough. It run out of fuel before we'd get there. And so here they are, trying to deny that there is a God. How many heavens are they? Three of them. Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, Verse number two, I knew a man about 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I, I can't tell. But he goes on to say, such a one called up into the third heaven. Now, if there's a third heaven, I went to school and I think it's a first and a second. You've got to have one and two before you get three, ain't you? So there's a third heaven. Called up into the third heaven. New man such as, uh, I knew a man whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knows. <clears throat> How that he was caught up into paradise, and he heard unspeakable words which is not lawful for a man to utter. Now all these that we have today that says they've been to heaven and back, <clears throat> they come back and they're rattling like an empty wagon of all the things they said they saw. I think it would be such a mind-boggling thing that you really couldn't even explain it, what it was. Who's he, who has seen heaven? Well, the Bible speaks about uh, what I found. Maybe these other, there's seven men that have seen heaven. 
Exodus and uh, Moses in Exodus 24, he saw the tabernacle of God. Isaiah in Isaiah chapter number six, he saw God sitting on the throne. In Ezekiel chapter number one, he saw the glory of God. In Daniel chapter number 10, he saw the pre incarnate Christ. In Acts chapter number seven, Stephen says that he saw the glory of Christ in Jesus Christ. Uh, and Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12 said he saw the third heaven. And John says in Revelation chapter number 1 that he saw the resurrected and the glorified Christ. And one of these days, along with John, I'm going to see the resurrected and glorified Christ, and I'm going to bow at his feet and thank him for saving a wretch like me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then there's a place called hell. If there's no hell, why do we need a Savior? Is there a literal hell? Matthew chapter number 5, verse 21, 22. You have heard that it was said by him of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Verse 22. But I say unto you that whosoever is anger with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, or worthless, or vain, or empty, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. I think we need to understand that Satan is real. Hell is real. Those who cho choose to serve the devil in life will spend eternity in an everlasting torment. Who's going to spend eternity in hell? Revelation 21, verse 8. Fearful, unbelieving, and abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, that's people that deal in witchcraft, adulterers, that's those who... Worship false God, and all liars shall have part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. I'm glad I don't have to worry about the second death because I died with Christ on the cross when he died. Will there be degrees of punishment in hell? Yes. Yes. After the millennium, we come to a great white throne judgment where sinners will be judged according to their works. Uh, Revelation 20 and 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead, the unsaved, were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Uh, he goes on to speak there in verse 14 of the second death, which believers in Christ will never experience. Uh, are people predestinated to hell? Absolutely not. Three things that we need to know about the character and nature of God. We need to recognize that God has a sovereign choice. We know here that he says that the Jews are God's chosen people. <clears throat> the purpose of God's choice is not for salvation. The purpose of God's choice is for service. We've been chosen to serve Him. God has preferences for nations. I think God allowed this nation, America, I think He allowed America to be discovered in order that we might print the Word of God and carry the Word of God to the uttermost parts of the world. If you've got a copy of the Word of God, you got a treasure there. So I try, to, I try to read this book every day. So we need to know about his character, his spotless character. Romans 9, 14 says, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. God forbid. God has to answer to no one. He owes no one anything but judgment. But God shows mercy and grace and forgives us 
when we don't deserve to be forgiven. We deserve to be punished. Then last of all in closing, we need to understand God's steadfast concerns. Uh, he wants you to be saved. That's the reason he sent Jesus. Jesus hung up on the cross of Calvary between heaven and earth. Forsaken of the Father. In order that you might be redeemed. Bought by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That when you ask Him. When you believe in Him. When you trust in Him. He makes a brand new creature out of you. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. <clears throat> you say, well, I don't feel new, don't look new. Uh, well, that's another story. Don't end up in hell. Don't end up in hell. We have a loving God who loves you and wants you to be saved. Thank you, Pastor, for giving me another opportunity to share the Word of God. Getting a little age on me, but I still got something down in my bones. Something that's there. That God put in there when I was just a young man. I had no idea. I had no idea the journey that God would take me on. But what a journey it's been. The people I have met. The people that I've had the opportunity to share the Word of God with and see them trust the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Savior. I was sitting in a place the other day. <clears throat> My oldest daughter, being the oldest daughter, who's the one that's in charge. Got me fixed up to get an IV. <clears throat> so I'm getting an IV. And this uh, young lady came in. I didn't know her. She sat down over from me. She says, you don't know me, do you? And I said, no, I, I really don't. I'm sorry. Am I supposed to? She said, uh, I used to ride the bus and come to VBS every year and I said well who are you and she said well I'm uh, Kanitha Grizzle oh yeah I know you had a brother named Justin they used to come we had an old Ford bus do you know when you got a Ford bus tell me did you ever drive one of them straight shift buses Okay. Do you know what happens when the synchronizers wear out in a transmission on a bus? You come down here to put it in fourth, but it's not fourth, it's second. And you, like that, you know. So you can't find the gears on this thing. So Miss Nancy Everett, who she wrote, she rode the bus, and one day she came up with a saying, if you can't find them, grind them. <laughs> so when I drive that bus, and it go, <laughs> all them kids would come on. Can't find them, grind them. <laughs> thanking for you, thanking, thanking you for coming this day. Don't go to hell. Come save me in heaven. I don't know what all we're going to do. But I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. Glorious. What a day that's going to be. Would you pray with me? Father. We desire to glorify your name. Because you're worthy. 
We thank you for the supreme sacrifice through your son, Jesus, who suffered tremendously for the sins of the whole world. Lifted up between heaven and earth that he might draw all men unto him. Thank you, dear God, for those who have been drawn. Thank you for those, God, who have accepted Christ as Savior. I never know in a meeting like this, there may be someone here that's not ready to meet you. I pray today, God, as they sing, pray today that they'll come. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in their heart that they'll walk back out of this church building, that new creation in Christ Jesus. What a joy today. What a privilege to stand in this pulpit and proclaim the truth one more time. All this I do pray and ask in the wonderful holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey guys, Pastor Scotty Gerard here, and I just wanted to say thank you for joining us today. We really hope that this has been a resource that's helped you grow in your purpose for God, but also grow in His glory. We also want to extend an invitation to you to join us here in person at Harmony Grove. We are located at 1008 Town Creek School Road in Blairsville, Georgia. We would love for you to come be a part of our service, to be a part of our small groups. If you have children, we have children's classes on Wednesday night and on Sunday morning. And all this information can be found on our website. We'd also like to continue help you in your growth with Christ. If you have a question, maybe a prayer request, or just need to talk to somebody, you can contact us in the emails below in the description, or you can also contact us through our app and through our website, which are also found in the description below. Again, we hope this has been a blessing to you because we know that you joining us today has been a great blessing to us. Thank you so much. God bless.